Hello, everyone, and congratulations on making it to the session nine of Genomic Variant Analysis and Clinical Integration course. Uh, in today's video, we'll be talking about how to navigate session nine uh, now that we're here. For that, let's go uh, quickly over to our GVCI portal. So as we know, this is what the portal looks like uh, once we log in. Uh, if you look at the top right panel here, we see uh, a link here for a user manual. If you click here, we actually redirected to a user manual PDF, which contains details of what uh, we would be uh, discussing uh, in this video today. Uh, so you can actually go back and check the manual once the video is done. Uh, beneath the user manual, we see uh, that there's a link to annotation of autosomal dominant variants. So this is a video by Ms. Anjali Bajaj, where she uh, describes in detail how ACMG AMT, uh, AMP attributes uh, can actually be given uh, for specifically for autosomal dominant disorders. So uh, if there's any uh, doubt, you can always come back to this video and check it out. Once uh, you're in this page and you want to go back to the home page, you can simply click on home here and you will be redirected to this page. Now, below this section, uh, you can see there's a section called variant list, wherein uh, variants uh, will be assigned to you. Once you actually annotate a variant and come back to this page, the variant will turn green and a new variant would be added to the list, which would now be blue in color. So let's say this is a new variant that has been given to us. Uh, once we click on it, we will be uh, redirected to a new page where again, we would see uh, a link to uh, Ms. Anjali's video and a link to the home page. Um, below this, we would see some basic details about the variant. So for instance, this is the ID, MEN1 is the gene associated with it. The disease is multiple endocrine neoplasia, which is autosomal dominant in nature. Uh, below, beneath this, we see there are th three different tabs, basic information, literature attributes, and computational predictions. So this uh, is the basic information tab, which as the name suggests, actually describes the variant in great detail. Um, so we see uh, information such as genomic coordinates, coordinates, HGVS IDs, allele frequencies, and so forth. Uh, the HGVS ID section is where uh, all the uh, cDNA changes and the protein changes would be given. So this is uh, where we need to uh, come here and uh, uh, search each of the variants, uh, each of the transcripts associated with the same variant and perform literature survey for each of them. If you look at uh, this tab right here, uh, the computational prediction tab, uh, this is purely for our knowledge. So it will just tell us what computational predictions are associated with this particular variant. So for instance, here, uh, PM2 is ticked, which means this attribute has been assigned to this particular variant and so on. We don't need to do anything uh, in this tab at all. This is purely for our information. Our work is mainly associated with this tab right here, known as the literature attributes tab. Um, as you can see, several attributes are listed here, including functional studies, disease association studies, um, and so on and so forth. So uh, all we have to do is uh, go to any attribute that we have to mark and click on add, which would be a button uh, right next to the attribute. So for instance, we know that PS3 attribute is associated when a functional study says that there is a, a deleterious or a benign effect associated with a particular variant. So we go to uh, functional studies and come to PS3. Uh, we would find a short description right here. And if our paper, uh, for the variant that we search actually suggests that uh, functional studies exist uh, that uh, tell us that this variant is uh, pathogenic in nature, we would click on add button next to this PS3 attribute right here. Once we click on add uh, on any of these, uh, we would see a pop-up come in. Um, so the first uh, 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 column here is PMIB. Um, there's also a column, uh, there's also an option for others, uh, but this is only in case a PMID is not found uh, for the paper that we are reading. So let's say uh, we find a PMID and let's just go with the PMI, dummy PMID for now. Uh, we would put copy paste the PMID here. Uh, we would select the inheritance of the disorder, which is autosomal dominant in nature, as we already know. Uh, we would also put in any phenotype that is associated with the disorder as described in the paper. Uh, so we would just um, copy paste the lines uh, right here in this section, um, followed by uh, the experimental evidence that we see. So for instance, uh, whether it was a Western blot or a comp complementation assay, what kind of test uh, was performed uh, or experiment was performed to actually uh, come to the conclusion that this variant is pathogenic. So we have to copy paste this from the paper here. I'm just taking Western blot as an example. Finally, we will talk about uh, what functional change uh, actually occurred. Um, so, for instance, let's say this transcript was uh, linked with dec decre decrease in enzyme activity and so forth. So, we will just copy paste that line uh, 
uh, right here. Uh, and finally, uh, what was the evidence? So let's say uh, we know that Western blot caused, uh, told us that this variant is pathogenic, uh, but how did it actually prove that the variant was pathogenic? Uh, these lines are uh, uh, always described in the paper. So we just need to copy paste those lines uh, right here. Uh, I'm here uh, again going with the dummy line. Uh, now the last section here is remarks. Uh, in case uh, there is, uh, uh, you have a doubt or you have, uh, uh, you know, you need to revisit this, then you can put this in remarks or if uh, you want to uh, let us know uh, that uh, there is something that uh, is additional to all of this information, then you can always put it in the remarks section, but this is not um, mandatory. So it's not compulsory. You can actually leave it blank here. And after you finish all of this, you would just click on add right here at the bottom. And you would see that here beneath the PS3 attribute, all of the data that you filled in would uh, now be reflected here. So for instance, uh, you selected PMID. Uh, this is the PMID. Uh, this was the experiment performed. This was a functional change and so forth. Uh, if you want to go back and edit this, you can uh, do so by clicking on the edit button. Or if you want to remove this altogether, you can actually do so by uh, clicking on delete. Uh, now, if you go back and search uh, this variant in other papers, and let's say there are other papers also that tell you that this variant is pathogenic in nature, you can just come back and click on the add button again and uh, perform the entire uh, process again. And one more uh, uh, details uh, column would actually be added right beneath this column. Similarly, you can uh, add uh, multiple other um, attributes as well. So let's say another paper tells us that this is actually uh, a PP1 attribute should be assigned to it. So the disease is actually segregating. Uh, the genotype and the phenotype are segregated. So you can actually come back and add this and so forth. Once uh, you add this uh, based on the attribute that you've added, uh, you would get a score here. So for each attribute, you would get one score assigned here and your score would uh, thus increase. And once you're done with the paper, you have to come back here and click on submit. Now you can click on submit on any of the pages uh, and you would now be redirected on to the main page. So as we uh, see, this is the variant that we just annotated. Now this has turned green and another variant has been uh, added to the list, which is now blue in color. Uh, if we come back to the left hand panel of the home page, we see uh, our name would be reflected right here, along with the total score um, and also the rank. So my uh, uh, score uh, after uh, the tallying all of the variants would be reflected here and the rank that I have would be reflected here. So uh, right now my rank is uh, not amongst the top 10. So that is why it's not reflected here. However, we see several uh, students uh, who have scored a lot of points and their scores are being reflected here. Now, this is how we navigate uh, the portal for session nine. Uh, now, if we go back uh, to our slides for a second, there are certain important points to uh, consider while annotating variants in session nine. The first is that all the variants that you annotate, uh, as I just described, uh, these variants would actually be checked by the faculty members at the end of the course. Uh, so we would be sitting down and seeing uh, which variants are correct and which are wrong. Um, based on uh, how many variants are incorrect, the scores that those variants actually got would then be deducted from your total score and your overall rank would reflect the same. So even if you're on, on the top, on, on number one, let's say, but you got uh, a couple of variants wrong, uh, then your uh, uh, rank would actually reflect that once the faculty has finished checking all the variants. Um, and lastly, um, to get each of the certificates, uh, you need to perform uh, ECMG uh, EMP annotation, but you also need to get all the uh, variants correct. So for instance, for course completion certificate, you need to uh, annotate 50 variants that have literature attributes and all 50 variants should be correctly annotated. So after the faculty checks uh, all of your variants, uh, if 50 out of all the variants, let's say you performed annotation for 70 variants, and if 50 of them are actually correct, and they all have literature attributes associated with them, then you would uh, successfully get the course completion certificate. Um, similarly, if you get 100 uh, correct uh, variants, you would get the expert annotator certificate. And for 150 correct variants, you would get master annotated, uh, annotator certificate. Uh, so with this, uh, I come to the end of this video. I wish you all the very best in uh, going ahead with session nine. Uh, let uh, May it be uh, a very productive session. Thank you.